Metal Viper, thanks for the tier one sub as well. Hope you keep enjoying the ops. Hope you're getting a kick out of this stream. Looks good. And I hope you're staying safe on COVID-19. All right. I promise you this good. will pick up after we start good. this round. It's just been a little Let's bit of a lull because we've been if you uh, are not in the game. If you're getting through everything, doing something else for whatever reason, get in the game. We have six slots to fill to hit cap. If y'all want to get in on this shindig, uh, this is a new server instance. We are looking forward to uh, better performance. We can go to map screen, admin, waiting on you. Let's go. Hold up the game. Let's go. Come on, admin. Push us. Thank you. So All right. I'm going to jump down to casting couch and we'll see what the map looks like. It is a sector control. What that really means is Blue 4 needs to keep one guy in every sector uh if they don't if op4 comes in uh the sector will be taken but as long as blue4 has one guy in the sector they uh will keep that sector now uh last sector control we saw was last week the soldiers in the shitter episode <laughs> but uh you know you don't want to see them uh trying to be gamer or anything so they won't try to corner camp anything specific now this is interesting we have... Okay, so I'm hopping down here early. Um, apparently this oh, is a throwback it. mission, Liru. And, um, holy shit. This it's Trump's like wall. First one. Oh my god, it is. It's this Trump's is... wall. This is the area. It's the, the peninsula it's south Trump's of Trump's wall. Well, the difference being that... America is pushing into Mexico and taking it. Now, this is a waved sector, which means they have to take sector one first. That's why it's highlighted like that. Then sector two, then sector three. As long as Op4 has a single dude in the sector, it cannot be taken until Blue 4 kills him. And then they just need one dude in there. However, with this being a tiny peninsula, uh, honestly, this terrain is relatively flat. Sector three is going to have that nice military base. There's no boats to remaneuver anything. Maybe we'll see someone swim up to the church and snipe from that little <laughs> island. But otherwise, this is a tough AO. It's on, yeah. like this is a legitimate choke point. I'll be curious to see how um, both Op4 and Blue4 deploy here. So yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Sorry, as I'm sorry, but um, Swamp, Lever, I know Swamp. you're very well uh, experienced with small peninsulas, but um let's, i'm really curious to see because how the players work this because there's not many approaches there really so, isn't from listening to the initial brief that they don't have fortifications on either side of this yep. so it is a case of the only high points are that hill 31 and then they have to rely on low ground maneuvering it relies heavily on your map reading ability on this one whilst also uh, negating under suppressive fire um this is going to be an absolute a chaos uh, storm essentially from actually Trump's sides. wall this was on Mexico and this was America center. so oops yeah uh, I checked the uh, team rosters uh, before uh, they pushed to map screen in fact I'm surprised we're still on there we go as I say it um, there were only um, MMG teams on op 4 and 10 minute start, save start time um, Lero I have intermission entertainment ready but do you want to save it for the second uh, intermission or we'll save it to the wait? second because this is going to be really curious to see how blue 4 deploys right off the bat on sector 1 we're seeing two extra bunkers being put down I guess for MG those got some really good eyes but the marksman can easily uh, cap those guys at sector 2 we're seeing more bunkers uh, put down and then some more bunkers even further back uh, there is is a pre uh map asset old rusted uh guard tower back here too and then sector three i don't see any additional fortifications it's really just going to be a combat tower garrison uh but i mean the mat team if uh blue four fielded him would be able to use a marksman rifle what's going to be curious to see is will blue four try to swim dudes over to the church island because this isn't a bad sniper spot to engage the uh tower from um, so i'm sorry red four has m249s and g36s and hold up out for, uh... they don't this have like a seven six two or something like that uh, kinda, yeah, yes, they got 240 on, Bravo yeah. too. Hold on, I mean, and then and Blue Four. With, uh, fucking GLs and so this is a pure fuck? mirror match of five five, five, six, five, six, five, five six. Yeah. Wow. 100% now based on the player skill with the rifle and the aptitude for it. Meanwhile, Blue Force that. Tiger Stripe. Sorry, go ahead. Regarding that uh, Ooh, really church nice. that you mentioned, uh, there is a small little sliver of land that may look just to be uh, shallow enough that you can oh. actually fjord it. I'm sorry, I'm gonna vomit. Blue 4 is wearing 6B23s. They're wearing Russian gear. Oh god, I'm gonna vomit. Well, so does Op 4 have Russian. It's This is literally a mirror match. So, Op 4 subjective. 
to the Germans we were op for, and German was blue for in uh, World War II, which is why the IFA mod has Germany as blue for, silly. Well, this we is just... In that case, you this is just a PMC versus a PMC, okay? And there's nothing else I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gorski uh, has the Maz as the Matt team gun. I mean, that could be saved and used on the cargo tower. Yeah, uh, I'd be wonder. I'd be curious to see if he has any HE rockets for it or just AT. Usually, just AT. Rockets, if it's heat rockets, then it's fucking pointless. Well, he could still take the tower out with it. Look at look at the uh, sector three, the big battle tower. No, oh, you like big battle towers, don't you? Yeah, unfortunately, you're a disappointment with them. But anyway, I mean, Op4 has a lot of room to uh, just kind of set up choke points and then occasionally pull back when they need to. But, you know, on the first sector, they do have some pretty good high ground points. So really, I think the guy that's going to win this is the marksman. But we see some of Scandi Recon camping out behind some rocks to the south. You might also see some plays where Op4 intentionally baits Blue4 to come in only to send a bunch of dudes in from the rear. Knowing, knowing Scandi, what they will try and do, they'll try and manipulate the uh, rock faces on the shoreline. Probably yep. utilize some of this construction yard about 300 meters out from that position. And use that I as don't a think basis Whale's playing. Just, uh, lay low, keep their heads down, and they're just going to bait them in. I don't see them. These guys are pretty renowned for doing Wolf's Den sort of tactics, yeah, where they playing. will 100% uh, of the time just try and lure you into a trap and you won't know what you're getting yourself into until the jaws have already closed and it's too late. Mm. Also, Barb, I don't think Whale's playing. I don't see him in the roster. Uh, oh, wait, he, no, he, he is off for. Whale! Whale! Whale, off the, the stream, you little chub. I mean, it's not right now. There's not much that he can see, even if he was. But I uh, mean, yeah, yeah, because there's no, it's yeah. just infantry. But we're seeing, um... Yeah. The unknown Frost that we don't know. He's trading some gear with other dudes. It looks like they have uh, two backpacks dropped and a tandem Heat Warhead. Uh, I don't think Op4 has RPGs. Yeah, they have 136s, so those tandem Heat Warheads are useless. Unless uh, there's a new type of reloading for the AT4 I don't know about. <laughs> I mean, hey, you hit someone square in the chest with a rocket, they're going to fucking die. I mean, ultimately, it's not only an idea to get rid of the useless things, but it's also to consolidate for kit. Um, if uh, you think, oh, well, maybe I'll come across one, A, that's not the right Good thing is, we're not it. seeing any decent right this now. Way, which is good. a lot more maneuverable in combat. Your stamina yep. regains faster, um, and it deteriorates a lot slower. Yep. So it actually it benefits you to consolidate, uh, in, especially in these PvP scenarios, and think, what do we actually need? Like, if you're taking somewhere like 6 liters of blood and 13 mags into a PvP op, you may need to rethink uh, some of your things. Uh, traveling light and uh, constantly swapping out stuff as you go along is the more optimal way to go, because it allows you to play more um, speed-focused, and not many communities are used to that. Some are more used to slow and methodical approaches. Especially in AO like this, where it's going to be all infantry mode. Ability. Yeah, the, I think the name of the game, this Blue Force attack, is gonna need to be tempo, tempo, tempo. I mean, they have a good click to cross before they get to Op Force territory, and Op Force, they, they might push out a little bit, you know, just. Gonna amend my mission command little, and not include the transport you know, vics because there are no transport vics. Little bits of cover and just be fucking assholes. But um, last I saw, Blue Force actually has a, a decent advantage oh, uh, in numbers alone. Yeah, they've over, got twenty percent, uh, and uh, with this being even. I mean, I I don't see, like, unless it, it's going to come down to the PvP again. It always comes down to the PvP. I mean, Op4, like, I guess the only advantage they have is they're going to uh, force Blue4 to come through some really narrow areas, and Op4 can set up some ambushes uh, by taking the sideways rocks and catch a few guys out of position for Blue4, but at the end of the day, it's going to need to rely on those even trades. Plus, Op4 can still dig entrenchments. So I'd be curious to see if trench lines are going to be dug, because I would totally they, dig them. They would be able to be dig entrenchments, but fortifications aren't allowed. Ooh, yep. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm watching Ajihado, north side of Sector 1. He just planned to down a uh, satchel charge in the bush. Mm. Ajihado's position right there, so that's going to be He's going to get his 20 kills again. 
So at this, <laughs> at this point, if they're employing a, a strategy that is often referred to as the uh, sacking uh, evac sort of thing, where if they perceive that the objective is no longer available to be defended, they'd fall back and they'd basically do scorched earth on it. If they yep. can't have it, no one will. I mean, we do have guys on the op four side planting explosives right now. That is another advantage that will help nullify the numbers advantage on blue four is if they place their explosives right. And with a little bit of luck for blue four to get on that position, uh, an explosive satchel could definitely knock out an entire uh, team of dudes, not yes. kill necessarily, but usually uh, knock out. Go you. ahead, Barb. I I'm with you on, on your theory as, but I'm like, what, what do you, see that they could actually do that kind of scorch earth tactic like on because it's just open ground some bunkers the only thing destructible would be the checkpoint tower by the fence and then the uh, cargo tower and sector three i mean ultimately it's scanning it keeps eyeing the these rocks um they do have to go through each sector sequentially um however there may not have to be any strategic importance of where the charge is placed they would have to go into that vicinity to claim the objective and by placing it in an inconspicuous place um, you may be able with the being a satchel charge the explosive radius should be enough to damage if not main people as far out as the bunker on the same side of the road yeah so now you, so you're looking at about saying. a 20 to yeah. 30 meter radius so talking about the score sure it's they have through. to go in there anyway to cap the objective and as long as Adri stays alive and he can spot where the enemy players are he can utilize that to basically do scorched earth yeah, no, that's a good call. No, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah, Scandi has um, totally been eyeing these rocks. I mean, they they got two seconds. more guys back there. I'm willing to bet they're probably gonna get in the firefight and then pull back. They gotta be careful though, because Blue Four might be able to spot them going to that position. And I'd hate to see uh, Blue Four know that Op Four is gonna hit him in the rear, because uh, that's just gonna be wasted manpower on Op Four's end. But we're still seeing some new trenches get dug. And yeah, I think we're going to see some really close PvP. If it's a one-to-one -one trade between Op4 and Blue4, Op, uh, Blue4 is going to have the advantage because of that 20% numbers adjustment. Uh, but I mean, just because of the waterway, there's not really any room for Blue4 to do any maneuvering outside of what Op4 is going to set. So it, yeah, it's going to come down to the marksman. And, uh, uh, the, go ahead, uh, uh, as well, as well, I'll go over that if, if you're offering. Um, <laughs> uh, on, the, on that point, with uh, saying that Bluefall would have a hard time pushing in, Opfall is going to have the same the thing. But the twenty percent man advantage, Bluefall can spread themselves wider on the entire of the peninsula and create no oh, openings. no, don't if, do uh, it. They're not. If Redfall okay. aren't able to pierce into a flank and break it, and then envelop on them, and start rolling up their flanks, Opfall are in trouble. They only have a limited amount of space to fall back. If they get pressured by the Bluefall advantage He's back they're not going to be able to sustain a firefight over an engaged period of time due to that man advantage and eventually they will start bleeding units yeah and attrition is not what up for really want to do i mean it, it all depends on how things you know pan out obviously but still just they need to be like the vietnamese and just strike Jesus. quick strike uh, effectively and then uh displace and on a defensive peninsula attack, um, attack like this, definitely going to be harder just than it blew on blued one of their own guys. Uh, Baspia just dunked a guy. You're kidding. I don't see a skull in the roster here. I... What? Who did yeah. you say it was? Baspia, he's just walking away from one of the bodies. Yeah, there's no skulls. I think that was just a disconnect or something. I don't know, but... I see the body. Is yeah, but there's no skull phantom. on the side. It's probably a phantom body just to get additional ammunition for. Uh, yeah, so you know when people join in and then leave? Uh, you know, sometimes it leaves an AI. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it yeah. might have been that. I'm going to check Bassbeard's uh, KD. He's not in the negatives. So I think it was just a, a phantom sort of thing, because if it was an actual... No, it was Blake that got the kill. He's at a negative one. So yeah, he just killed off an AI, I guess, to make it fair, because, you know, you don't want additional AI help, because you know how, you know, sometimes you leave the server AI, and leaves uh, an AI. Yeah. Um, I think because of the server settings, though, uh, it's not going to respawn. However, I'm going to go check debug corner real quick, because sometimes they respawn in that corner. But I'm not seeing anything swimming, so I think we're okay. 
So Scandi yeah. living up to the meme of uh, forest-based combat, they have found the only light forest at that first sector to shoal up on. That's uh, the area that they are able to perform in it at their best, and seeing that, <laughs> that they're able to utilize that to their best advantage, it's going to be amazing to see how they're going to be the face of the Mongol horde. The so Mongol I know guys. you're saying that as a meme, but honestly, looking at the rocks behind that they're actually using as cover in the trenches they're digging, it's actual concealment that's going to help them maneuver around, and I'll be curious to see how that's much that help. helps them in the firefight. Ooh. Also, by the way, Marksman Watch, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Lefebvre, I don't know how to pronounce his name, he is the Op4 guy on a peninsula on his own. Trying to get Overwatch on the northern flank. Meanwhile, the Last blue four marksman pads, he is way ahead. Uh, I think he's trying to run up to the small construction site building and use that as a base of Overwatch to uh, start getting shots. And again, I think the marksman's going to be the most important asset and probably get the biggest KD because this is perfect marksman weather. Well, not even against the press coming to uh, his spot like Jake is right now. Uh, Blue 4 Bravo, they've set up a pretty uh, chunky base of fire uh, just no to kills yet. the alpha lines. And uh, some effective, some return fire coming in. Uh, just as far as suppression. But um, yeah, they are. The engagement is starting out distant, and that's kind of good for Op 4. AC4 just came in. Yep. Uh, towards the first position. Nurse is A okay, though. Yeah, that, was, that, that went way too low. And, Unless that was HEDP, it probably wouldn't have done much anyway. Uh, that no, sounded like the Maz firing, uh, because they do... No, they don't have, uh, yes they do, it's, um... It's Gorksky, um, fired a Maz round, you can tell by the, uh, type of explosion it makes. We gotta okay, consider, so. if the exp if they actually manage to hit one of the, uh, explosive satchels, that explosion will detonate the satchel. Will it? No, it's... It should explosive. Oh yeah, no, it'll it'll detonate a satchel. Yeah. Oh, I never knew. So if you look where Outcast is actually stationed himself up with that Jihado, that keyhole that he has made is gonna be so hard for the Oh yeah. yeah. So identify for. But it's actually getting fairly accurate shots onto the Delta teams of Blue Force. By the way, Arcor and Montgomery are both dead for the Blue Force side. Arcor was the AT assistant for Gorski. Uh, Montgomery was in Bravo. So far, no Op4 deaths, though. So already, right off the get-go, Op4 getting a few of the first kills. And if they can keep that up, they can help nullify that advantage. But we're also seeing a bunch of trenches set up on the first area. Like I was talking about, it's going to turn into trench warfare at this point. Yeah, they have a decent... Uh, Yanni's dead. Ooh. And Patterson is dead, so... Right off the bat, Blue 4 returns by taking two Op 4 lives, and we're still dead even with 20% number advantage on Blue 4. Yeah, um, they have, Op 4 has a decent setup uh, going at Sector 2 right now. Uh, I think they've actually started... Yeah, no, that's just a, a map line. So what do you guys but, in chat um, think? I think this is yeah, uh, so they're, they're probably going to getting be, messy. Uh, uh, Stratico almost ran to, into Patriot's uh, line. Weather the, weather the storm as long as possible before trying to fall back before it's too late. Detonate their charges once they get in uh, Blue 4, take Sector 1. Of course, got a bunch and, of guys uh, up here. Marksman might two. be able to get an angle uh, shot on point, them, though, but from this distance, be, it's going to uh, be a bit tough. Position. Go ahead. The Bravo section actually looks like they're mainly trying to prep Section 2. Um... It's like I said, with the, with the guys trying to web out the storm, essentially these guys are the delayers. They've openly accepted that. There's a there's a good possibility that the people at Sector 1 aren't going to make it to Sector 2. Their entire job is just to buy time. They by the way, the real quick. The duration was 15 minutes, well, 30 minutes. And so hopefully by just delaying, they should be able to win this one. So the round is for 30 minutes? Yes. Okay. So by the way, uh, Alpha for Blue 4 is now attempting to make a maneuver. They rallied up, but the Op 4 Marksman sighted them out. I think he's trying to line up some shots now. Uh, we might see him start getting some blitzing, but looks like Op 4 is doing a massive pullback from this position, probably to try to get onto uh, Sector 2. We just saw Infidel get hit. Nemesis might be coming back up to pick him up, but overall, it still looks like it's two deaths even. Um for both sides. Well, so the uh, first uh, line of defense has been given the all clear to start pulling back. The yep. second wave has uh, been already erected. I want to see if these guys set up down here. You may see Scandi actually try to utilize some of the rock features. Uh, hopefully back some, up. Of, some of the Red Four guys should uh, maneuver on these rock features on the south side of the peninsula. Maybe to use that as a flanking position. Uh, that would be idealistic. 
Um, but after uh, taking four or five I casualties from that one, I would say the advantage goes to Blue Four in this one. Yep, there are only two KIAs on either side. Uh, looks like that is staying. Op4 has completely pulled out of that area. Uh, I guess they're, again, trying to bait uh, Blue 4 to come up to Sector 1 so Audrey Hado can get that charge and see if he gets any kills. I'm not seeing any of the Finnish guys go to those rocks on the southern side, which is unfortunate. I really wanted to see that style of ambush, but it looks like they're just going to set up another wave of defensive lines and try to get Blue 4 in a closer PvP engagement. Uh, and we still have the Marksman scouting out the right flank. He'll probably try to get some licks in as well. Notice that the off all oh, garrison a little farmer yard on the northern side, just short of section one. What you probably could have done very similar to what Audrey did with the Satchel Charge in that bush at the, se the extra section one is to probably push out one or two guys, rig that place up with explosives, because that would be a prime firing position that Blue Four would have been able to go to. You can identify that even from the map screen. Um, and you could just rig that place to go. You'd probably rack up an easy 10 15 kills if you got the marksman keeping eyes on it. Mm. He was ready to uh, crank steel, and all of them would have got up in a puff of smoke. Well, it, it's also, I'm pretty sure using the M57 detonators, which have a range of like two, 300 meters, so yeah. maybe not super effective with that specific um, uh, setup, but still, yeah, one satchel charge on a combat engineer for uh, taking out eight to 10 blue four guys, easily worth it. Outcast running down with the marksman. He was spotted though and is taking a few shots. He's gonna retract attention to their marksman's position. That's a little unfortunate. I don't think Outcast knew he was here. Cause now he's going back. Yeah, now he's going back. <laughs> Just over to say hello, but I mean Outcast does have a machine gun. This is a nice strip of land to utilize, but where is no, Pads? Pads has his Vector 21 out. And he is looking right at the uh, forested area that Scandi was in, I guess trying to make sure that all of Op4 pulled out. But let's see, we're only like four, this has only been four minutes. So, I mean, no, 20, was, uh, 10 minute, 10 minutes oh, you're right, time. 10 minutes. So, Nine and there's minutes. 30 minutes total. So it's uh, about 21 minutes remaining Op4. Good pace, but they need to do better. It is yeah. good pace, but they need to hold Sector 2 a little longer here. Hopefully get lucky with um, that satchel charge getting some kills. Because now you're going to see Blue 4 take all the trenches that Op 4 made. And that's going to move them away from the satchel charge Audrey Hado put. And yeah, it like, might end up getting squandered. Uh, 13513. Yeah, it's in a bush. One three five, one three one. Three right behind five, the uh, uh, northern bunker, six. it's that one green bush uh, just behind it, between yeah. a smashed uh, brown bush and a rock. I love smashing brown bushes, but anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> I got no segue. You wish. At four <laughs> gets launched. And there goes. And a little miss, but that. that's okay. There goes the charges. Oh, Drake clapped. Dreek got ragged. If they just waited another 10 seconds, so there would have been so many more blue four guys that came uh, on it. So I don't I think that was a bit a of a squander. Misplay. They should have waited. Misplay. But I get it, because Dreek wakes back, wakes back up. Because again, those satchel charges are re-scripted to do less damage to infantry. Same to AT and whatnot. So good scorched earth play, but it was just a little bit squandered. And I think Blue Four knew that because they only sent one guy ahead to capture it to bait Op4 into deading it early. So unfortunately, just a little bit of a squander there by Op4. And we're still seeing two deaths even for both Blue Four and Op4 here. Uh, if, but, yeah, go ahead. If you're if you're drinking that case, you're wondering what the hell just happened. <laughs> Like he, yeah, he went from that detonation oh. zone into the rock by that uh, little barricade. He's got a. Uh, How did you get knocked out? <laughs> so I just watched. Needs to figure out, like he need, he's done this like five times oh. now. He needs to realize that ASEX field rations is not signed by the server. Yeah, uh, he'll probably never figure out. What sucks though is when people do that, it does add a little bit of desync load to the server. Also, Op4 Marksman is engaging, and I saw uh, Quayen 
Q-U-I-E-N on Blue 4 randomly went unconscious. Uh, wasn't shot by anyone. He just decided to take a dirt nap, I guess. But I also noticed uh, Russian forces, or excuse me, Op 4 forces using GP-25. Also, some AT-4 just came in, but I'm not seeing any damage because, again, those uh, H-E-A-T shells aren't going to be too effective in his infantry. But with Blue 4 getting uh, forced into this narrow corner, GP-25 is going to be a lot more effective because you can just fire it in the direction and probably hit someone because those are going to essentially become little mini mortars at this point. Guys, the GP-26s don't use GP-25s. These are... Sorry, well, yeah, 40, uh, 40 millimeter is like the same as a GP-25, so... Yeah, like, yeah, they're yeah, both 40 yeah. millimeter yeah. in diameter, yeah. so... Like, they're pretty identical. Shots on Blue Four Delta, way far oh, has gone down. Fairly accurate shots. Gets a kill, finally. Uh, and uh, has now drawn blood. Blue Four is at four deaths, by the way. Op Four is at one, two, still at two. So again, similar to the first sector, we're seeing Op Four start with a few cat. Um, Op Four starts by dishing out a few casualties, but now will Blue Four bounce That's back and dish out a few awesome. casualties themselves? 17 and a half minutes remain. We're seeing the Grenadier rounds coming, but it looks like they're landing just short. One of them was a smoke round and uh, is doing my little heartbeat monitor before it lands in the ocean. One thing I've noticed about the back end of section smoke two. Smoke ranging is not a bad idea, though. In between two and three, it's a uh, chain link fence. Now, this thing has three breaks in it, the three possible entry points of the ocean. If Redfall can actually hold uh, by keeping a hold on this, also trying to limit exposure, they can uh, shoehorn all the blue for. Oh, yeah. Of them, because they have to fix all of Speaking of Fatal Funnel, and look at all the rounds Op4 is putting out right now, just as general suppression. One of them is dedicated for shooting at pads, the Marksman, though, but look at the Marksman. They're also really close to each other right now. Uh, um, uh, GPM, uh, General Purpose um, 40 mil just hit the back line of Blue Ball. The uh, injured quite a few people with uh, the Charlie teams. Oh, it wouldn't be GP25. You just said that. It's, all, it's all 40 millimeter. I said 40 mil. No, you said GP, uh, general purpose 25, which is op 4. Uh, AK. Oh, I'm fact checking you because you fact checked me. Re! Oh, stop fighting. Just get a real you two. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Get us in it. Oh, dear. This All is right. a casting couch. You know that, right? So blue so force still sure. only. They're general on five KIAs now. <laughs> they're on a general retreat order right now. Op4 taking some casualties. No direct KIAs, though. Again, those GP25s being used as artillery rounds. It's crazy. We also have Rust on his own up here on the left flank, I guess, trying to get some scouting data. But, yeah, no, it looks like <gasps> Blue 4 is going to maneuver all of these guys on the northern flank, and that's going to completely expose them to the marksman. That's exactly what Lafave wants, and he might be able to get some licks in, but instead he's uh, trying to keyhole through two little rocks right here. So, so uh, Ace Beard and Paz, they're uh, sticking to definitely and sticking to the low ground well enough. However, Indigo Fox and his crew, they're going to crest up here in yep. plain view of uh, Lafar. But the question is, is uh, the marksman going to turn and see it? Because, again, he's looking through those two rocks instead. But he's pretty exposed right there. Oh, now he's looking right. He might be able to see something. At this point, he's just probably communicating with his Ooh. teams. He's got a great position to see all the infantry Tim. approaching. But he does want to give away his actual position because, again, he is exposed. He's by himself. He's got plenty of supporting assets through machine guns. He's going on, on the open fight. side. What is Lefebvre doing? I, I guess he's repositioning here to get behind this rock instead. Those smokes are going to go out. Uh, he might be able to get some licks in. Welcome to the bottleneck. Ooh, one shot, one kill for Lafave, and that's two for him. Marksman Ooh, is the over there. Oh, he goes unconscious and gets tapped. Oh, Blue Four lost their Marksman. Oh, that, and that wasn't even Lafave returning fire. That's how yep. MG fired. So we might see Bassbeard grab his marksman rifle to continue yeah, it on. I would in his shoes. He's already doing it, I think. Let's see, Lafave, how many kills is he on? He is on two. Nice. If we were to scroll up, I want to see how many kills so Pads had. He had none. Bassbeard is uh, grabbing it, though. The using 556 five, rounds, the maximum effective range isn't going to be that far. So even if they do get accurate shots on target, ballistic protection will protect them quite easily. And just looking at the clock here, 
Alcor has set up a great pace now with uh, 14 minutes remaining. Um, we usually get 15 right? minute notifications though, so it might be a 10 minute, but it might be the 55 then, I don't know, but... We'll see, but um, either way, they're delaying this very, very well. I mean, just looking at the map, it is a very distinct line that Blue Core is not going to be able to cross yet. You got some people yep. like Firefighter and Indigo who are kind of pressing the uh, the edges of the uh, envelope, but there's obviously with the Mencio attack, like there's not a ton that they can do. We've, uh, what well, I would do is firing up there. Right now is that we've got about 60 to 70 percent of the Oh! The section that firefighters are, you push him up all along the, that little sector whilst they're not watching the angle. Go along the little rock face and can come up on the flank of Red Four. Whilst that flank is coming up, the just pop smokes and keep going forward. Look at Gorski here, he's running up. Uh, firefighters also running up on the right flank too for Blue Four. Honestly, they need to send some guys down that flank. There's a lot of little roving hills and rocks that they could take for cover, but Blue Four needs to do some maneuvering desperately because uh, I've been watching them take a few casualties here and there. We're seeing some fire come out of the battle tower at Sector 3. Hot yeah, I've been watching um, a 762 uh, 240 fire at that battle tower, so I don't know. But now we're seeing Gorski also fire out with his 556. Yeah, they're trying to set up a decent base of fire again, like the first, uh... Here's the right flank. ...the first sector, and they've taken the number of casualties forward up on the north side. I'm seeing two down blue core by Blake's position. That's a GP um, round. Three, actually, as more people... I love you know, it. I see people bandaging themselves and, you know, shuffling about in cover. You see Bravo, blue core, coming in on the south side. Karif is spearheading the push all on his own. Just trying to make something happen. So they went for long. It's having get the tune. The uh, blue four. Blue four is getting some good uh, 40 millimeter shots in here. That's making a lot of people have to pull back and bandage. Also, um, Op four has noticed this massive uh, southern flank uh, pushing through. Uh, but they're going to be able to get right on top of the maneuver. So Op four, if they want to pull back, needs to do it quickly. Uh, because they're about to have a large group of blue four on top of them as another group of blue four basically covers with machine gun ammo. That, uh, natural, uh, that Still have two the kills. Natural chokehold that I said with the uh, barbed wire fence. It works both ways. Red Bull have to funnel all their guys through there. And if yep. blue can get eyes on those choke points, they can start cutting off Red Bull's retreat. There are some holes in that fence, but even then, like, it's still, like, just wide enough for a fatal funnel. So it's real quick, up for... Sorry, um, you're right about the Fatal Funnel. Op4 is still only at 2 KIA. Blue 4 is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 KIA. So Op4 is pretty much nullified Blue 4's number advantage at this point. Jesus. Looks like the Op4 is getting the general launch to retreat. Yep. And... I'm looking to see if they're setting more charges. The grass makes it a bit difficult, but I see them like dropping RPGs, rockets, and stuff. Um, Outcast is now on the south side by his own, kind of being overwatched by Infidel a little bit, kind of. Op4 just had their third KIA. I think it was um, Fade, uh, who was in Delta 3. We also have Wailing bleeding out in a bunker with no one to grab him. Alcaz is pushing up along the south side a bit. We're at the 30 minute marker, 15 minutes. Uh, warning hasn't been called yet, so I don't know if this is only supposed to be a 30 minute round. Uh, it's 30 plus, uh, or 20 minutes plus the 10 minute start, so we're 20 minutes in now, but yeah, that would still mean 30 minutes. Okay, no wrong. I'm can can you do that. math, my friend? Apparently not. <laughs> Uh, do you know math, actually? I, I, I thought... Yes, 3 know. plus 2 equals 7. Anyway, uh, Lefebvre, I've been monitoring his kill count. He's still only at 2 kills. Uh, look at what Outcast is doing! Yeah, Outcast is pushing up along the rocks on his own. Uh, Finn's pushing up with him. And Outcast has a 249. I mean, if he gets an angle here, he could catch a lot of Blue 4 guys out of position. And these are the plays Op4 needs to make to help nullify Blue 4's number advantage, despite it already being nullified. This would further cripple it. But Outcast if he could get on top of this rock. 
He's here in the chat. Our pin's right behind him. Oh, yeah. Cast is slowly pushing up. I don't know if he's checked his ammo or not, but he's going to need that full ba uh, full box to take care of all these guys. And he comes around. He should see Wheaton here any second now. Oh, oh God. Oh, no. oh, my God. There goes Anderson. There goes Wheaton. Two drops. Oh, Outcast is now pulling oh. back. They're trying to get on the rocks immediately. Finn's prepping a frag. Wheelie tries to get a shot on Finn. Frag is ineffective. He's going to completely stall that flank. And no, Outcast has shot Finn. Yep. No, that was uh, uh, a quickly, quickly finished. Outcast off. got a first yeah. shot there, so that Finn was silly. Got shot by Outcast. But uh, this might be a, a blessing disguise for Outcast because I think they're only going to think there was one shooter. Maybe. They were using There's... two different guns and two different calibers, so maybe also PID though. Uh, no, uh, no calibers, calibers are the same. Sense. It's the 249, not the 240. Um, I was thinking the hip-hop uh, FMG. This is yeah, stalling yeah. Blue Force advance, though. Again, I don't know the whole time limit here. Also, it looks like Legs finally figured out his mods, but... Oh, if you notice, late. that have that section that Finn and Outcast were able to push up to, they're overextended from the main force. That, shouldn't have turned his back. has been keeping all the heads of the rest of those Blue Force units down. Like, they had to pull off from that northern flank solely because of the fact that they were taking too much accurate DMR fire. Outcast might out. crawl out and see Firefighter. Yeah. Oh. They, they, if they, Firefighter looks they, down, Outcast looks up. Finn woke back yeah. up! What? And Finn's gonna do <laughs> What? Bridges. The finish bias. Scandy recon, Scandy recon. Another Cooks more frags frag going out. Goes wide into the ocean. Over that other one. Now that goes over the rocks. Real quick. Finn. No. Still Finn. at two Finn's kills. Finn. 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 Oh. Why that's a bad idea against AI, and it's an even worse idea against people. Finn forgetting he was playing AI for a second. Queely might come around. Quickly. He Quickly oh! doesn't see Outcast. Wow. Didn't, didn't quite see his little cubby hole. Outcast, Outcast gets, gets another gets kill, another. but he oh. gets dropped by Queely because he pull, uh, shoots him after seeing that. So let's Good see. Effort. Finn was able to get one kill out of that. Outcast got four kills out of that. That is the types of trades you want to make in this uh, type of environment here. Because again, they are helping to nullify Blue Force number advantage. So I'm going to do a and quick head still count. There? Still, uh, Blue Force still like turned One, two, up three, four, by, five, uh, six, like, seven, I still sector one? eight, nine, ten, eleven, like, still have twelve, move anywhere. Base 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, 17, 18, 19, 19 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I mean, Gores is out in the open. 29, Man, two. Team is out. Kona just got shot. All right, Somebody real quick. 29 for Blue 4, unless Kona Hine was just Blue 4. One, Kota two, three, four. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, he's, he's 10, 11, 12, he's 13, he's 14, down, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, so it is 29 blue four versus 26 op four right now. So blue four has pretty much lost their 20% numbers advantage at this point. And Op4 is they're doing the full retreat now. We're going yep. back to Sector 3. I'll be and, curious to see uh, if they do that bottleneck Azurai was talking about, or if they just fully retreat back to Sector 3. Well, let's try and scan again for more uh, satchel charges or something, some kind of surprise. But with two going up in that first sector, should still have um, one, maybe two? Bass Spirit is engaging Lefebvre. Managed Ooh, to yeah. not make any shots, though. I was wondering, so, I literally just checked on him because, you know, Lefebvre has been exposed up there for a while. I'm surprised Bassbeard didn't find him. Anyway, go ahead, Azariah. So, the one thing that Blue Fort really needed to have... Bass has been able to get tempo, two kills. And ultimately, Red Fort achieved what they were trying to accomplish, which was just to stall them out. The tempo up to four. has stopped there. They've not moved out from that uh, first position in about 10, 15 minutes now. So, for them to actually get any momentum whilst they're constantly under fire, they have to work on their medical, then they have to regroup, re-correlate plans, and then keep on moving forward. All that Alpha really need to do is just keep on pulling back. Give them, give Blue Four the room, because the more room that you give them to actually maneuver with, the more condensed you can concentrate your fire. You can uh, focus fire from one certain uh, vector, and you can just uh, suppress entire. Trying to stabilize Coda. Companies at a time. 
Yeah, and uh, that's the thing. Like with this terrain, they Bluefur has been having occasionally good ideas. Like working the flanks, especially since it's low ground on the uh, flanks of the peninsula. Working the flanks, trying to maneuver and engage, maneuver and engage, but just like between the red four marksmen, outcast and Finn, that's what charges. Like they've just been so Ooh, bogged just got down. Popped. Oh, yeah, so Lefebvre just yeah. sneaked in two more kills. He is 6-0 and right now. Meanwhile, Bassbeard's 2-0. and But yeah, uh, Lefebvre, he's cut off, but he is still using his marksman rifle to get some licks in. So now it should be like 27 blue four, 26 op four at this point. It's it's anyone's game. And what's interesting now is, especially with Lefebvre, he's, he's just got his seventh, I'm pretty sure. But, um, because I saw someone drop after he shot. Yep, but, yep, he uh, is at seven Blue kills Park. now. They, into a charge. They're, just they're, they're charging, and this is what L4 has wanted. They're, they want, they, I'm sure they want to bait out the charge so they can shoot them in the open. Yeah, really so. Down even more. Fev might get a few more licks in, but you gotta consider both teams have to be running low on ammo. I'm seeing a lot more of the rifles firing, a lot less of the machine guns firing. So Op4 might be trying to keep that ammo in reserve, but looking around, I'm also not seeing that many automatic rifles in Op4's possession anymore. I just saw one after checking like 15, 20 dudes. So Blue Force done a really good job of focusing on the real heavy hitters. And that might mean that Op4 is not going to be able to stop Blue 4's massive charge here. Now, Blue 4 capitalizes on that. That's going to be very, very risky. Lafave trying to get uh, more shots. He manages to knock out Quian, uh, but it wasn't a kill. Bassbeard, Bassbeard just shot him. Uh, no, I think that was Indigo. I, I just saw Indigo. Bassbeard give a shot, but uh, who knows? I mean, might have been Indigo too. Uh, I I think it was, I think I, the, he, was, he was looking at him and I think I said the tracer. Either way, he's I down, but that still up. Of made is that they've smoked forward and then they're moving forward into their own smokes. If you're red for and you see them popping smokes, you can just get the MGs if they still have ammunition or uh, if you're in a healthy ammo capacity to just spray into that smoke screen because you know that the infantry are moving through it. They fail to navigate to the left Wait, or to the right. We, we see this pressure. happen all the time in FNF though, as, but as go ahead, Bob. The smoke, the, the smoke doesn't give... It doesn't stop the bullets? Oh, shut up. But well, as I already said, Op4 doesn't insane. really have any more MGs left. Uh, I only saw one looking at everyone. I see a 240 Bravo by Metallic Wolf up on the tower. Maybe they were keeping a reserve. Whale also has a 240 Bravo. So yeah, like three machine guns remaining for the entire platoon. Uh, Op4 maybe uh, just ha got them all killed. Zerby has the 249, is watching the southern flank. Uh, but yeah, maybe, uh, I know Outcast had one when he pushed up to kill guys, but uh, either they're out of ammo or uh, the, all the guys that had them are dead. Meanwhile, looking at Blue 4, I'm not seeing that many automatic rifleman symbols either, so we're starting to get to a pure rifle fight at this point. You also, got to take into consideration also Fave woke back up. A lot of uh, Red 4 have now occupied that battle tower. If uh, Blue 4 held onto the AT and they start seeing that a lot of fires coming up from that, that tower ain't going to be the uh, do long for this world. Yep. So Op 4 garrisoning the last position. Uh, not close enough to really watch those check, uh, choke points, in my opinion. They could come down the uh, fence off area, but they do have a platoon HQ group and a machine gun to watch that southern push, and they are definitely firing. I just watched the M249 nail... Uh, one of their 249 gunners as well, or that might have been a 240. It's hard to tell. I think it's 249. So but good shot on Serbi. Machine gun section has eyes on that southern approach. Yep, three, three kills. Guys in the, uh, one kill for Rust. Bunkers. One but kill for Jedi. Side where they're not seeing many people advance from. That's not really uh, mm. working to their advantage. They're not pushing that point. Oh. And that's why it's less garrison on that north side. You've got to be able to read these situations a little bit better from the side of Blue 4. Did you just see that squander of explosives? Like, they did it as soon as that pop-up came up, but I don't think they realized where Sector 2 was. Like, that would have been beautiful to carry on for later, but... Oh, that was Again. such a squander. Yeah, look at those. They're so far northeast. Yeah, the guy who reset them, the combat engineer, must have just been like, oh, yep, uh, they took it. I'm going to pop them now. And then... Again, completely just wasted an opportunity. Bassbeard never really told. Hold on, Bassbeard never told Blue Four to go check on Fave's position. Fave is still alive, and he is now in a really close angle to start shooting at any Blue Four guys that come in. It looks like Blue Four are trying to push Platoon HQ's machine gun position. Seen some GP25s go off, but if they adjust, oh, he 
get shot again, but he was able to get another kill and knock Tim out. So he might go nine and one. And that's exactly how you wanted the marksman to operate at this angle. And now uh, Blue Four Marksman's gonna take pot shots uh, on dudes on the tower. If he could line up a shot on Tarnfalk, who is uh, trying to line up GP25, he could do some significant damage. Shot just went just to the right of Tarn, really close. Also, Tarn doesn't realize he's shooting into the uh, tower top. And Lafave wakes back up and he's ready for more. No way. Eight kills, I think Tim woke back up, yep. But Op4 is slowly gaining this number advantage because of the small plays with single people able to get multiple licks in. And there's no weapon PID because everyone's using the same types of weapons. 556, five, 762 uh, for their marksman rifles and the uh, MMGs for the Delta teams. This is this is the worst nightmare, honestly, for these types of flank attacks because you're not going to be able to tell with all the shooting going on if it's friend or foe. And I've seen multiple times in Friday Night Fights where uh, weapon PID from both audio or even the drown out noise has worked to other people's advantage. My favorite one being when Logan shot a platoon HQ guy, uh, the platoon command, while a BTR was firing right next to him and the BTR had no idea that he just got sniped. Yeah. It was beautiful. So one thing that Opfar was using to their they just got hit. using their previous defensive Oof. positions as focal points. They know that Blue 4 are going to be moving up on their position. They know that they're going to be taking over these Ooh. defensive engagements. Blue 4 just tried uh, AT, but it missed. However, I didn't see a detonation. Oh. oh, maybe a little desinky there. They always have eyes on it from their next position. You can see Adrihado, Infidel, Ooh. Nemesis, um, Starkonka. Uh, they've all got eyes on that secondary position that uh, Red 4 initially fell back to. And those uh, guys are on the blue force side. They are taking force counter pushing just because they're trying to get shots in. Guys, by the way, op force counter pushing. Where? Uh, they were all kind of huddled in the base. Now there's more guys on these defensive lines trying to hold these choke points. They might yeah. be noticing blue force kind of losing their Easy numbers out. here. Well, Lafav is at uh, ten kills, by the way. I'm sure that's also contributing to their uh, sluggish push. Uh, as he's now trying to re, uh, reposition, we're coming up on uh, well, 11 and a half minutes. Uh, and at this yep, rate, there's time. we're not even going to get close. Yeah, no, um, really, I, I would credit this to LaFave. I mean, those 10 kills, uh, this is like a 40 v 4. Uh, it was like, what, 37 v 40, like 5 or something? Yes. Yeah, um, like so, I mean, LaFave's been able to kill a little under 25% of Blue Four's entire force here. And he might catch Bassbeard in the open, but I think a bush is going to block his line of sight. Yeah. I'm, Bass is thinking, also crippled. Um, no, he's... Okay, thinking, no, that was desync. <laughs> I was I was thinking with the... Um, uh Compositions and everything, you were saying Marshall Tim Rifles are going to be never the got uh, X-Factor. I was thinking it's going to be the machine guns because of how much fire they can put out, but the precision of the marksman rifle seems to be making Fave more just attention. spotted Bassbeard, and Bassbeard does have the other marksman rifles. That could be resupply for Fave, but if Fave gets right behind and tries to take Bassbeard's oh, uh, Bassbeard, position... Bassbeard stays still. If he, if he stays still... Mm, oh, there's one shot. One Bassbeard's immediately going to reposition, but... Fave has a lot of room to maneuver up to Bassbeard's position. Bassbeard, again, Especially... only getting two kills early on. Fave still at uh, 10. He's going to change out for a uh, rifle. A lot of uh, the tempo that you were saying that was held up by um, Fave and his way before lost their aggression was yep. because of the fact that the tempo was taken away from them. The delay tactics for the use of explosives, the flanking maneuvers from Finn and Outcast, uh, all these contributing factors just bought time. And that's all that Red 4 need to play. They don't need to play for elimination, they don't need to play for um, capturing objectives. They just need to say, okay, we'll uh, fight you, but on our terms. We will use mm -hmm. whatever tools that we see possible to make it so that we are a on your side. Absolutely. Fave not and crawling that, up. Um, Poe's pushed up pretty far ahead. But yeah, he got some good there. grenades on some Op4 dudes. Didn't get any kills, though. He's and he's now getting grenaded him. himself. Yeah, I'm not going to do too much, I don't think. But we'll check back in with him. But it, it's the fear, yeah. though. I mean, he just made Ooh, Op4 pull Fave's back a little bit. Nice! 11 kills for Fave. And he's now behind their lines. I don't know if Bassbeard was able to get out. He just took down Hoyt. Hoyt's yep. down. But these guys, they think they just got picked off by someone else. I mean, I mean if Fave goes up and takes that marksman rifle back, that would be perfect. 
There's only currently five or six uh, blue ball players still active. There are about twenty. There's eight actually. Still. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking more and more like an outdoor victory. Just oh yeah. Ooh, Elson just got a snipe on Slammer. That's again, exactly it's all because of the delaying tactics. Yeah. Yep. Did not need to fight, and they played that beautifully. Babe's checking bodies. Uh, he's sticking with the 203 he has, but it has to be low. Nope, he's trying to fire it. Babe was a marksman. He, he dropped the, the... Yeah, he the changed marksman the marksman rifle, rifle, got a regular rifle, and now he's firing right into Blue Force, uh group right here. And they have no idea! He knocks oh, Mito man. out! And they're like, damn, this is some accurate GLs. Oh, right on top of Han. But I think the... Uh, shrapnel actually his favor. More that shrapnel going on Han, that's gonna cripple him. Mito tries Mito to wake back up, he does not. Hoyt is also knocked unconscious, he's just glitched out. And Han has no idea, he's trying to roll away. Gets shot in the head, helmet takes it. More double taps going. I mean, Fave right now, uh, that's three down, so he'd be at 14 kills. He's, he's reaching Audrey Hotto levels, man. Yeah, especially being able to work this flank, and like you said, without the that audio uh, PID, they're just hearing more. The, it's just it's not that it's getting lost; they're not hearing it. They're not recognizing it as hostile. Because why would? Wait, hold on. Hold, Lafay switching back to um, Bassbeard's marksman rifle that he took from the other Blue Four guys, so he's gonna get right behind the remainder of Blue Four and just snipe them out. Um, Hoyt is. He's got the same glitch for me that, um... Yeah, I think he's still up it. somewhere, rocking, but, uh, you know, just watch his rifle. We'll know if he's firing at that point. But, uh, LaFave is firing down at Eagle. Get some hits. I'm pretty sure those are headshots, too, but doesn't... Yeah, well. knocks Eagle out. And now it's five blue four that are up. So, I mean, Which Fave, he's at 11 top kills, top. three downs, which is gonna get him up to, like, what? 11, 12, 13, 14 kills. But no, no, because I counted Hoyt, so he'd be at 15 unless Hoyt is uh, still alive somehow. I think he is. I think yeah, I think he's just moving him. around. But yeah, Acid is uh, here in the back. Hoyt Blue 4 just lost there. another guy to the front. Yep, that was Poe. He's down and out and disconnected. Frost very uh, CQC with uh, Allison. Nope, not anymore, because Allison's fucking dead. Yep, uh, Serbi went down with the 249, but was able to take him out. A fun guy, Pantalonis, and Hoyt. Serbi and... right now with that 249, by the way, he had five kills. So again, Op4 just winning the PvP. Getting fun that high level of kills. Out. I think fun guy's out of bandages, because he's just walking down the open. Right yeah. Him, up on him, and and he gets he mowed down. I mean, he was out in the open, Frost had his legs and dick covered by sandbags. I mean, just lower target profile versus bigger target profile. I'd love to see Fave come up and get oh, some double taps. There goes Acid. One and person left, up. it's Hoyt. It's Hoyt, and LaFave, um, he needs to be careful to get blue on blued. LaFave needs to be careful he doesn't get blue on blued, like he's being right now. He just needs to go up and double tap. He's gonna check inventories, notice he can't get the inventory, and then he might, uh... Dispense the double tap. There goes Hoyt. Yep, Hoyt's dead. Blue Falls eliminated. All right, still some guys up. Fade uh, gets the so double tap. He's at 12 official kills. Switching out for another 5.56 five, rifle. But I mean, yeah, Fave should be credited for like 14 kills. So he did a little better than a guy named PHK in round one of EU who was able to get uh, 12 kills. So, um, I mean, yeah, we've seen... This has been the craziest FNF branch uh, where we've had uh, just, you know, 12 kills, 20 kills, 14 kills. It's been great. And I've seen some people is talking about like, oh, what was Blue 4 meant to do? Blue 4 had a major numbers advantage, and there goes all of them. There's it's some blue on blue, but they uh, get it up. There's Blue 4 eliminated. But yeah, Blue 4... Yeah, big numbers advantage. Yeah, Blue 4 had the 20% numbers advantage, but lost it early on. And I'm going to really equip that to uh, Pads dying early as the Blue 4 marksman and then Bassbeard not finding a good angle. Had ba uh, Bassbeard told Blue 4 to go check on Fave's position... Fave... On the Fave. Oh no, Fave! 
That's okay. But had uh, Blue Four gone and checked that position earlier and killed Faye back when he only had six kills, Blue Four would have still had another six to twelve, uh, six to uh, eight dudes still alive to push that angle, and that could have made the difference. I called this in the uh, beginning. This was going to be a fight of the marksman. Who had the better marksman? And you know. One marksman was able to die, get no kills. Uh, someone took his gun, got two kills, but Fave got like 14. So, um, I, before we hop up a debrief, uh, yep. I just want to say the mission name for this one. Oh no, the Russians are in Finland. This triggers the Scandi. Oh god, I'm got jumping up. 50% accuracy boost. Times a 762 in the face, and he didn't die until I went down. So that was questionable. The yeah, fave, Hello, I would have loved to have sniped 1v1 you for a little bit longer, but. Um... After you reposition, I just can see. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I were, were you the other marksman? I think that's. I was the other marksman. Here at the end. Killed eight of your friends. <laughs> oh yeah, I came behind you and killed you. Yeah, I had to pick up I your weapon and your team's weapons. To I think you one tapped me. I was gonna grab it to fight you, but you got the jump of me. There was you a couple people I one tapped. One. Fave, you got 14 kills that round. That was beautiful. I MVP sat on that mental sure. the whole time until the last like five kills. I'm... I took an M4. I... All right. I downed you twice, like... <laughs> yes, desync is gone now. When you're but definitely you MVP of that round was fave. Alright, let me get community leaders to now, post the Now, we're gonna go numbers. to round three. Thank you for participating in my hellacious attack defense scenario. Yeah, Come let's on, change guys. the map. Anderson, I fucking love that. My bad. Uh, side note, I hated the loadouts. That was awful to look at. I wanted to throw up in my mouth. Uh, question. I enjoyed those G36. The attacking side. Oh, no, great. Advantage, so just like... I feel like we needed a little bit more.